Anglican. Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, a special edition. I'm Kevin Coulson, and I have with me Melvin Tinker. Okay, welcome to another show. Here in America, we're just getting over celebrating the great colonist tradition of Thanksgiving. And uh, I've been watching the news over in England, and uh, uh, there's been some news with Melvin Tinker and the um, the cathedral in Derby. And I thought I'd get you on and we'd get to talk about it. Um, first, people probably don't know you on the program, but you're part of a successful church up in St. John's. And I thought you could talk a little bit about that. So when sure. people are listening to who's this Melvin Tinker it's, guy, they have a little idea of who you are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, um, I'm the vicar or rector, as you would say, of St. John's Newland uh, here in Hull. And I've been here nearly 25 years. And uh, Hull is a great city. Uh, last year, it was the city of culture for the UK. And uh, it used to be one, probably one of the largest ports um, fishing ports in, in England, but the fishing industry is gone now. Um, and um, also it's it's famous because uh, it was from Hull that William Wilf Wilberforce came who abolished the slave trade. So it's got a very long, um, distinguished history and, and a Christian history as well. If I remember correctly, Hull used to be the same population of Christians as Japan has. It's very low... Uh, it in, That's in correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's about 230,000 people in Hull, and only something around about 0.7 percent actually go to church. So it's got the, one of the lowest church attendances, probably the lowest church attendance of any city in the United Kingdom, as you said, comparable to Japan, which is about 0.7 percent as well. Oh, wow. So the challenge is there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is. I mean, uh, here in America, especially in the Northeast, we call ourselves post-Christian. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if that applies to all of England, but uh, certainly where you are, it's it's a it's mm. a great challenge. Um, there are so it many is. unreached roots, unreached groups uh, that are brought up in you know, societies like England or societies yeah. Western societies like um, America, where they have no concept of who Jesus was or Jesus yeah. is. And well, we have that challenge, and um, but the Lord's been very kind to us over the over those twenty five years, and we've seen the church grow and grow. Uh, so I, I guess we'd be on, an, on a, a, a normal Sunday, you know, congregations counting people once, we'd have between four or five hundred people. Uh, about a hundred of those would be children, and that's quite unusual, that's put it mildly, in yeah. this day and age. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we we did ten adult baptisms, uh, a number of Iranians, Kurds. Uh, one from Cong the Congo. We're quite a multicultural congregation, a mix of ages, uh, of cultures and backgrounds. It's it's a joy, really. It really is a a great um, display of the gospel, unity in the gospel. People from it's, all ages. It's a radical display of the gospel. Indeed, it is, and yeah, that's, that's amazing. Praise God. Um, I was reading in your bio that uh, Oxford and Wycliffe are part of your history. Uh, yes, Wycliffe, but that's the way oh, you pronounce it. That's right. That's my, know, that's my you, you, <laughs> American English. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. Uh, Wycliffe, that's great, yeah. And, and tell me about that. Uh, yes, uh, well, I um, trained for ordination in the Church of England at Wycliffe Hall uh, in, in Oxford in the um, early 80s, 1980s. Uh, and uh, while there, I also read theology at the university. And... Um, since then, uh, I went on to do a curacy. I was also um, chaplain uh, to Keele University over in Staffordshire, the other side of the country, um, a vicar near Manchester for a while. Uh, but then most of my life work has been here in Hull, as I said, for about 25 years. Uh, and as well as um, parish ministry, which is really where my heart lies, I've had a wider ministry, both in terms of writing, uh, both books, academic uh, as well as popular and academic um, uh, papers have been published and so on, uh, and also having a wider teaching ministry around England and also um, the world. Well, this teaching ministry that you have where you visit and, and give uh, talks mm. is kind of what the reason you're on the program. Uh, yeah. The Christian Union, uh, uh, a bunch of students said, hey, we want to invite Melvin Tinker to uh, Derby University. Uh, 
kind of overseen by Derby Cathedral. And uh, we'll put out the call to him. You said, hey, I'll come. I'll tell you Indeed. guys about Jesus. I'd love to do it. Uh, yeah. But somehow, uh, as it went up the chain, they saw the name Melvin Tinker, and they said, oh, <laughs> we can't have him here. <laughs> that may interfere with the image we have at Darby. Uh, and I thought we'd talk a little bit about that. Um, sure. How did you learn that uh, you were no longer invited to uh, Darby? Yeah, um, well, the one of the um, members of the Christian Union executive phoned me um, last week and said, I'm sorry, Melvin, it's really, um, you know, quite, she was quite gutted about it, that um, the cathedral uh, would not allow me to preach. And, um, I, and I, I told her beforehand, you know, because they asked, who's Melvin Tinker? So it wasn't that they saw Melvin Tinker and thought, oh, we don't want him, because they didn't know me from Adam. Okay, so um, I said, well, you can tell them Anglican priest, um, university chap. I've got the credentials. Of you priest do. At Durham Cathedral, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, so I thought that would go down well. Um, anyhow, uh, she said, well, they said, no, you cannot come and preach uh, because of your relations with York Diocese, uh, negative, presumably. And then she said, well, can anyone, uh, can, can someone else from St. John's staff team come and preach? And they said no, categorically. So that was the reason she, they gave to her. That was the reason that was related to me. Um, but prior to that, uh, just to say that uh, the Christian Union received an email, I think it was, or a letter uh, from the subdean. And um, the reason she gave initially was, quote, unquote, uh, what is preached in the cathedral is taken as being preached by the cathedral. And there the implication was that I may say something which would bring the cathedral into disrepute, but given the nature of the cathedral, I can't see how I can bring that into more disrepute than it already is. Um, so there are two, you know, there's there's been a bit of, well, I don't know, um, not straight talking here, because on the one hand, official position is something to do with my teaching, but the underlying reason is because of our stance in relation to the diocese, and particularly, I think, the Church of England. Yeah, I think, one second, and just to, I had to adjust something. Uh, we just avoided the problem we had before. This is my okay, second great. recording today with uh, hey, well. <laughs> Melvin. You <because laughs> should get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> technology. You know, if I can't do it right twice, then uh, I should be doing well. something else. Uh, you were talking about... Uh, the reputation of Darby Cathedral. And I'm going to go back here. This happened before my time. Uh, there was a movie called, uh, oh, I wrote it down here, Don't Look Now. It was an X-rated movie. Yeah. Never seen it. No desire to see it. Um, but for some reason, Darby Cathedral thought the students at Darby University may want to see it. And well, if they're they going to see it, why not show it at the cathedral? And, yeah, uh, well... <laughs> Well, it wasn't simply the students. I don't think any of the students are bothered with it, really. I mean, it's a sort of, I think, 1970s film anyway. Um, but no, they wanted um, the whole of Derby to come in. And they gave three, um, three sort of reasons, really. Um, one, they said, we want to draw new people in. That's what they said, first reason. Second reason, um, they said, uh, it's a season, actually, of films, including uh, Monty Python's The Life of Brian and also The Wicker Man, which is about paganism and yeah, again there's sure. some huge scenes in there uh, second reason they said we um, um, every culture works out what it values and believes through telling stories stories that power to take root in the human heart and that's what we're doing well I say well what sort of stories do you want to take root in the human heart if they're erotica you know yeah. but the third reason and this was the this is the, the classic the third reason they said is financial cathedrals are expensive to run that's the real reason why they put on these sort of erotic films um, and dodgy films. It's money. It is money. And one of the reasons I think you were kicked out, if I'm reading th through the lines of all this, is um, your church has decided to withhold funds to your diocese. You're That's in the correct. Diocese of York. And um, I don't know if my audience is really up on what happened at your last <laughs> synod. But um, your last synod was very hard on Orthodox evangelical Christians um, who believe that uh, a relationship with Christ changes us, that with Christ all things are new. 
And I was really surprised that even the Archbishop of York was extremely mm. harsh to the conservatives and the Orthodox and the Evangelicals. And I, yes. Could you talk a little bit about the Synod? Sure. <clears throat> well, it wasn't the last Synod. It was the July Synod of, of, 90, yeah. uh, of 2017, uh -huh. uh, which was actually held at York. And so the Archbishop of York, John Sentamu, uh, was, uh, was chairing. And this, uh, this uh, synod actually shocked the sort of uh, hardened, um, you know, Church of England, no matter what type of people, even amongst the evangelicals um, and, and the more sort of open evangelicals, because um, the way in which people conducted themselves was quite appalling, including, uh, we have to say, the Archbishop of York. So when Andrea Williams, for instance, of uh, Christian Concern was speaking, and it was in relation to uh, um, the, um, the question of um, conversion therapy and so on, uh, she was being booed and hissed, um, you know, from the floor. And then um, her motion was squashed by the Archbishop himself um, in, in, a, in a very distasteful uh, way, which was a shaming way, really. Um, uh, and then later on in the Synod, um, Jane Ozan was um, putting forward uh, her, her views again on, on, on trans um, position and, and the like. And, and to be honest, was coming out with some old fashioned heresies. Now, the, one, as you know, one of the duties of a bishop or archbishop is to actually refute error, to correct. There's no question of correcting. In fact, it was endorsed and, and welcomed. Now, <clears throat> this, this was really the flashpoint for us at St. John's, because when our people saw this, because you could watch it on the video, uh, on, on streaming, they were genuinely shocked and appalled and very, very upset. But it was a flashpoint. You see, it's part of a progression that's been going on for many years now in the Church of England, since perhaps the days of Runcie in the 80s, there's been a downgrade. It's accelerated, particularly under uh, under Welby in recent years, uh, moving more towards the situation you have in the States with TEC. Um, and so as a result of that, we wrote an open letter, which you can still read online, uh, Anglican Inc., um, to the Archbishop of York, basically uh, expressing our disquiet, asking him to repent, asking him to do his, his duty. And in the meantime, as an, ex, uh, as, uh, as an expression of our concern, we will withhold our funding to the diocese. Um, and there's been a bit of to and fraying, and, and we're still there. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're good. I just want to say, and we know cathedrals love money, therefore you got his attention. Uh, yeah, well, that's correct. Um, mm. We received a letter from the Archdeacon saying, um, oh, well, at the very least, you could say that um, uh, we've we've heard you. Uh, our response is no, we've got your attention. <laughs> we've still not been heard. No, we're not. Well, we've not been heard. So it, it, it's just so. Yeah. OK. Well, I I think one of the things you pointed out here is things have really changed under Welby as far yeah. as um, this idea of radical inclusion can only exist if the conservatives are kicked out. It's, you know, yes. I think under, you know, the, the later years of Rowan Williams, it was a desire for the conservatives just to be quiet. We're in a listening position. We're going to mm. do in DABA. It's really important that we hear uh, the side of uh, the LGTBs. But right now, under Welby's administration, it's if you're conservative, really, you're not welcome here. Radical inclusion well, does not include you. Uh, it's, it's a bit more, slightly more subtle than that. Um, Welby would be very happy to have almost anyone as long as, and, and you can talk till the cows come home. It's when you do something, it's when action is taken. That's not what he wants. So he, he, he needs, in one sense, evangelicals, A, because we produce the money as well mm -hmm. as the numbers. And so it looks good in statistics in a, in a denomination where each year there's a decline. Um, but... Um, what he, he will not want is any evangelical uh, or evangelicals that will rock the boat, will, which will actually act upon their evangelical principles and take action. And I think it's very, it's comparable, given that we've celebrated the uh, 500 year for the Reformation, that um, um, the, the thing with Luther, you know, I mean, you, you, people tend to think that the Roman Catholic, medieval Roman Catholic Church was 
monochrome. It wasn't. They had all sorts of different views, uh, really. And so Luther, they would have been very happy for him to preach his view of justification by faith. Um, but what they didn't like was when he worked through, that's right, through the implications and in indulgences, which was raking in the money. Mm-hmm. When that stopped, then literally all hell broke loose. Well, in um, Germany, so at the, today, at the ta- yeah, at Germany at the time of Luther, they had traveling caravans of yeah. uh, bishops who were there to take the money uh, uh, for your indulgences. It was a really active marketplace to yeah. uh, raise money for the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church at the time was using that money to build larger buildings in Rome. And yeah, yeah. So it, similarly, it, here you see in the, in the situation in England. Um, the um, it's, all, it's a question of power at the end of the day, and money means power. And so to withhold, uh, how do you express your disquiet or whatever it is? Action's got to be taken. So it's it, you can write letters and 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 they'll keep you talking and keep you talking until you're worn out and until the progressives win, and mm-hmm. and they're well on the way there. Um, but the only in one sense, money talks. And, and and not only that, but other things too. One needs to take action to promote the cause of the gospel and say no to the progressives. Well, it seems to me the Archbishop of York and certainly the, the leadership at Derby Cathedral are acting almost like mafia. Yeah, You're not paying think... your, uh, your protection money here. <laughs> you, you can't preach. You know, pretty soon I, yeah, well, I'm going to be reading was... about Malvin Tinker had legs broken. <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> well, it's not quite El Pacino, but um, I know what you mean there, Kevin. Yeah, I, you see, it's interesting what's going on um, because <clears throat> what lies behind the the um, uh, the banning of me, and it, it, that's you know they don't uh, the, the dean of um, Derby Cathedral doesn't like the term banning, but that's what it's amounted to a veto. Mm-hmm. I cannot come. That's a ban. Um, what lies behind it is 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 the, is this as I said the relationship with York. So what is going on now is basically if you if you are awkward, you do not play the game, then we will find ways of restricting you and, if you like, punishing you. So you want to exercise a, a good gospel ministry with these dear young people who, who want to hear the gospel. We will make sure they don't, whoever they hear, they can hear an evangelical, but they're not going to hear your kind of evangelical, people like you. So you're going to be restricted in your ministry. That's what's going on. And it's quite appalling. It, it really—I I don't know if it is um, Godfather, but um, it, it, well, it it's is not a, far I, off. It's not far I, off. I mean, how soon does uh, you know Welby or others decide? Hey, listen, we're going to take away your license to preach and and do communion because you're not paying your fair share. Uh, you I know. don't think they can't do that. Oh, they good. No, uh, really. But you're acting yeah, because, like they well, never the thought is, of it. Okay, they can't the, do the it. The thing is, <laughs> the way things operate here, okay. um, it, it, certainly in this diocese, but the, the, it's called a free will offering. So okay. it's of your free will. So our free will, we've decided not to offer it. It's a free country still. Right. Um, so that's what we decided to do, to, to exercise our right to, to withhold paying. So it's not a tax. It's a free will offering. And we would rather use that money... Uh, elsewhere. Now, sometimes it comes back and say, oh, come on, you know, you're getting a salary and so on, uh, which is true. Um, but also we've been paying the full salary of two other clergymen in, in, in our uh, in the church, which the diocese has not paid. So we, we've been relieving them of two salaries anyway for the last 10 years, at least, as well as paying for my own. And I think to myself, and, and a lot of, quite a number of churches which say, oh, well, they can't afford to pay. But many of those churches are progressive churches or liberals. So no wonder they're going down the tube. So why should, I think to myself, well, if the Church of England or the Church Commissioners can find money to pay for non-gospel workers, why can't they find money to pay for a gospel worker like me? Yeah. But, but we don't want to be in this situation, Kevin. Honestly, we would rather pay. We would rather like, we would want to give our free will offering. But we've been put in this position because we're not being heard, we're not being heeded. Um, and um, the trajectory is is going to be leading more and more people away from Christ, and especially young people. And I think what's happened in this cathedral is going to be taken badly by a lot of the young people. If this is the way they treat us, hey, we might do it this year, but why should we bother doing it next year? Well, here in America, 
uh, right after Gene Robinson, you know, hundreds and hundreds of churches started to withhold their diocesan contribution, is what we call it here mm -hmm. in America. And it slowly, you know, was the spark that led to the formation of the yeah. ACNA and, and GAFCA and other things. Um, mm -hmm. Does is this helping this uh, uh, grow with the diocese and the role with the Archbishop helping GAFCON grow on the shores of England? <laughs> it's difficult to say. Um, where GAFCON UK is at the moment uh, is still quite quite small. But the, the situation, particularly amongst Anglican evangelicals, is very, very mixed. Um, and um, the, well, the main thing is a good thing. They're not all like me. <laughs> um, so some some are much more. It's an Ang it, it's an English mindset. It's also to some extent there's a class thing involved in in England. You know we still have upper classes. You know, and the establishment. And so there's for many from that particular background, it goes against the grain to go against the establishment. It's like going against the Queen or whatever. You just do not do that. My background is very different. I'm from a, a very working class background. My, my mm -hmm. father was a coal miner. So I don't have that sort of restraint in, in, in a way. So because of that, there, there, there's, there's a pressure for good people to play the game, to be part of the system, not to rock the boat, and to support it more or less to the hilt. Well, I talk to many people who are evangelical, <clears throat> have the same doctrine and beliefs uh, as yeah. you do. And like a Lee Gatiss will say, we're not there yet. I'm not going to tell you what it would take to get there, but um, we're not there yet. And then there's like a Gavin oh. Asherton who is like, uh, what's taking you guys so long to leave? Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, you all say, you know, share the same doctrine, same education. Uh, in, in many places, you know, within a realm of class together. And it, it's interesting to, to watch the reaction uh, and an establishment like the Church of England, which is a, a church state, versus here we had the frontiersmen of America who just can't <laughs> wait to cause a fight and well, very different. You indeed. said what? <laughs> okay, yeah. David Crockett. You know, yeah, the yeah, David Crockett of the world. I, I got lots of friends over in Texas, and uh, I always remind them um, that this church building here at St. John's uh, was built three years before the Battle of the Alamo, 1833. <laughs> this church, was built. so that's history from you guys. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, you, you mentioned Lee, who's a good friend of mine, the Gatiss, uh, and, you know, what will it take? What they're saying it will take will never happen, because mm. I think what they're saying is, look, when, it, um, the, when the canons are changed, when the 39 articles are thrown away, when the liturgy is changed, that's the line. That's not the way it will go. Uh, that, that, that is old fashion mentality old-fashioned thinking is much more subtle than that now the way in which and this is sort of neo-marxist thing the way in which things are changed now is not by engaging in straight face-to-face -face confrontational arguments it's getting people to change their perception more particularly to change their feelings and to change the meanings of words so they'll have the same words or even the same liturgy but then you change the content of it so it means something quite different. So they're not going to change the exact wording, but they will change the 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 sense of it and the use of it. And the bishops have already said you can do that. So they can use the baptism, what we've got at the moment, the baptism ceremony, to signify someone who's changed their gender. Now, if that isn't a line that's not been crossed, I don't know what is. That's, that's an interesting line. Here in America, we had a, a female priest, I think she's Lutheran, who says, um, listen, pornography is okay if it's well-sourced. <laughs> Which, to me, okay, so if, it, if it's produced by the Church of England, it's okay to, you know, good good <laughs> pornography? I, I, <sighs> um, well, the mind boggles. Um, it, do, it does. But yeah, we're not quite keeps... there yet. I mean, so, so the cathedral showing these dodgy movies is just perhaps the first step in that direction. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, the, the dean there said, well, you know, God's seen all this before. Yeah, well, he's seen Sodom and Gomorrah before. It doesn't mean we've got to replicate it. Yeah. Well, I'm sad your money's not going to York, and this is inside baseball talk here. Um, I understand they need some help repairing the flood-damaged walls in the basement. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just, that's just what I hear. 
I want to thank you, Melvin, for your time and for sitting down a second time today with Abe McMahon Scripted. Fine. It looks like I'm looking at the monitor here. All the, the issues were fixed. Um, okay. This is one of the, 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 the magic of Anglican TV and Anglican Scripted is being able to sit down with a person in England or uh, David Old in Australia yeah. and have the internet work 100% the full time. And when that doesn't happen, I'll be looking at the tape later. And, you know, Melvin, he was giving a great answer, and then his face disappeared. <laughs> and then his voice disappeared. I said, you know, the audience does not want to know that type of Melvin. They want the, they want the <laughs> whole <laughs> the whole Melvin. So I'm glad you had time okay, to well, sit down Okay, well, hopefully it's us. all right this time. Yep. So yeah. let's sign up. I'm Kevin Carlson, and I've been speaking with Melvin Tinker of the Church of England. And you've been watching episode... 459 of Anglican Unscripted. Wow.